Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. We are here today to discuss the TABC led operations that occurred on October 18th at nine different Houston area bars. Before we begin, I'd like to list three priorities of this press conference. First, we will provide a high level briefing of the operation, but please understand that the investigation is ongoing and some of the details are still not available and some are not, we are not going to be able to share today because of the ongoing investigation. Number two, we want to recognize and thank our task force partners, uh, many of whom are standing here with me today and will also speak if needed. But uh, one uh, that I'd really like to highlight is State Representative Charles Cunningham. Uh, sir, thank you very much for your support and being here today. And third, and most importantly, with any of these types of operations is we are here to seek out information on potential human trafficking victims and ensure that we can help as many people as possible. To begin, TABC led simultaneous operations at these nine, in these nine locations uh, with the help of the Houston Police, Harris County Sheriff's Office, DPS, the FBI, and many more agencies to include the Human Trafficking Rescue Alliance, which is housed here at the Houston Police Department. In total, over 200 people, both peace officers, criminal analysts, and victim services professionals from non-governmental organizations were involved. I'm very proud to report that each operation was conducted safely and quickly. We identified over 80 women inside these locations who were possible victims of human trafficking. We also executed four arrest warrants related to the investigation. Each of these locations was then issued an emergency order in accordance with Alcoholic Beverage Code 11.1.614 which authorizes TABC to suspend a business for up to 90 days if the business... Oh, I was going to do a little video on this. Also, none of this would have been possible without our partners. TABC is a relatively small agency with just over 200 peace officers. Therefore, the cooperation and sharing of resources was vitally important to the success of these operations. To quote J. Edgar Hoover, the most effective weapon against crime is cooperation. The efforts of law enforcement, law enforcement agencies with the support and understanding of the American people. Lastly, we are taking a very victim centric approach to this investigation. You will hear from the TABC Victim Services Coordinator very soon. She will speak in both English and Spanish. She will provide additional information on how potential victims of human trafficking can report it to TABC or other agencies for help. Again, Thank you for being here. I will turn this over to TABC Chairman Kevin Lilly for additional comments, and we will be available afterwards for questions at the end. Thank you, Chairman Lilly. Thank you, Chief Swenson. Uh, my name is Kevin Lilly, for the record, L-I-L-L-Y. I am Chairman of the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Uh, I want to thank all of you here. I want to thank all of you. Hey. Um, our partners as well as members of the media to talk about this uh, important operation and also this important situation. Uh, I really want to extend my gratitude yeah. to the uh, the yeah. Human and Rescue Alliance, APRA, okay. which is a, essentially a task yeah, that could be. designed to deal specifically with human trafficking. Also with the partners the Chief mentioned, uh, the FBI, uh, Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Gonzalez, thank you, sir. District Attorney, DPS, FBI, Homeland Security, State Department. What's important about that is that this is a collaboration between state, federal, and local law enforcement. As the Chief alluded to, this crime is so large that we have to use every resource that we can, both at the federal, state, and local level. And today's operation, or this week's operation, I think was reflective of that. I think it also reflects TABC's broader mission that if we can cut off the lifeline for the cartels and the traffickers by shutting down the venues where these heinous crimes occur, that can have, I think, an, a very important effect. Um, and as he mentioned, this was not an easy operation. If you can imagine one operation is complicated enough, imagine nine simultaneous operations basically throughout the city of Houston at exactly the same time involved flawless precision and cooperation. This really was an extraordinary day for law enforcement in this country. And everyone behind me is to thank for it. And 
yet, and yet, despite the heroism of the officers who went into harm's way, knowing there could be armed individuals behind those doors and more, despite that, this is still a drop in an ocean of human trafficking that exists. Recent study by the University of Texas said that there, at this moment, now, over 300,000 victims of human trafficking in the state of Texas, including 80,000 children. Let that soak in for a minute. 80,000 children being sexually abused for profit. That's about 1% of our population. If you extrapolate that to the United States, that number could be in the millions. It's a business model. Why is it so prevalent? Human trafficking is the most profitable underworld enterprise that exists. Now, narcotics is obviously much larger. However, if you think about it, narcotics have to be replaced. Narcotics have a supply chain. Yeah. You use one, dispose I just of wanted to uh, post this, and sold. get those numbers out there. The 80,000 children. Human trafficking is that a human being is reusable. I suppose again, those children again, come across the border. Again. And we are providing that wow. inventory to the cartels. I want to thank Most Kamala Harris, our presidential nominee on the Democratic, Democratic side, for Federal taking state, part of this no with President uh, Joe Biden. That no one steps across the border without the cartels involved. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kamala. If you are a family and you come across the border, you have to pay $10,000, 20, $20 wow. $25,000. I don't think some passage. mom or some dad will really thank you. These are four individuals, some who have walked 500 miles, only to find out that they have to pay a toll. Crazy, crazy. And so what is the outcome? Y'all should be put in jail. You'll pay it off by slave labor as an indentured servant. And unfortunately, if you're a girl, you have a daughter, 15, 13, 16, she'll be told that she'll be working in a bar, as I'm sure many of these girls were, as a waitress, only to be enslaved in a perpetual life of misery and horror. What we have created, ladies and gentlemen, is not the American dream. But for these people, it's the American nightmare. I witnessed myself the wow. deplorable conditions of these establishments. It was horrific. They looked on the outside like a regular bar or a nightclub with a bar, a dance floor, pool tables, but behind them is a labyrinth of hidden rooms, cement floors, closet sized with soiled mattresses. All right. Y'all have a good day. God bless. Hiding. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Kamala. Doors and secret doors of these establishments. 